If you know me, you will know that Grand Theft Auto 4 is my favorite game of all time. Admittedly, I'm being nostalgic, but even after 16 years, it still holds up really well. All the new technological developments and content that Rockstar introduced into GTA Universe with this game are groundbreaking, making it one of the most essential, if not the most important game in the series. Rockstar's evocative story of Nico Bellic, an immigrant whose convictions are strong enough to propel him through the crumbling substructure of Liberty City's world of organized crime, set a new standard for video game storytelling. So I decided to relive my favorite game of all time. Following the release of the Grand Theft Auto 3, the Grand Theft Auto brand skyrocketed in popularity, laying the groundwork for the innovative approach to an open world gaming. Vice City and San Andreas raised the bar even higher, with their narrative-focused arcade-style gameplay. However, Grand Theft Auto 4 was released in 2008, and it marked a significant advancement in the new game genre. That was the game that removed several of the more unusual difficulties from the previous games, such as remote control helicopter missions and low-ride matching puzzles. Instead, it focused on realism, a more mature sensibility, and bringing the classic GTA franchise into the modern era. The game was truly a masterpiece in every regard, particularly the story. Starting with your cousin Roman, a small-time operator known for the exaggeration, you will work your way up through the criminal networks until you acquire what you want. Unlike previous GTA protagonists, Nico is not aimed to establish himself as a badass out there to dominate the city at any cost. He is looking for something, the mission he conducts are his only method of finding it. He may commit multiple heinous crimes, but there are periods in the story where you can take your finger off the trigger or make a decision about how things should progress. Despite the senseless violence that many associate with Grand Theft Auto characters, Nico is an outlier in many ways, since he follows a code. The game infrastructure has improved, but there's still room for improvement. The fundamental gameplay experience has been enhanced, particularly in terms of its task mechanics, plot flow, and the numerous travel alternations of availabilities. If Nico fails a task, a notification inviting him to retry it appears as soon as he respawns, and when you die, you do not lose your whole ornament. Hailing cabs to waypoint on your map makes it easier to navigate the vast metropolis. Stealing a car and driving yourself is always a possibility, as is the more immersive experience of traveling in the backseat of the cab the entire time. Peering out of the window at passing lights, cabs are definitely welcome for anyone who's short on time or would rather avoid the unpredictable perils of driving throughout the Grand Theft Auto environment. Still, you will be restarting missions frequently, which often involves repeating portions of the task. Many missions are divided into four stages, initial travel, an escalating event, a conflict, and an escape. Getting through an on-foot shooting sections, which were a major pain with prior versions, clumsy control schemes, is much easier now that I have a cover system has been implemented. From the behind the cover you can blind fire, quickly pop out to unleash a few shots, or move from cover to cover. A system that does not always work precisely, but is a significant improvement over the previous series. Some mission structures are simply remarkable and fit perfectly with the narrator's progression. However, as a prior titles, there are still opportunities to make mistakes. You could be executing a mission flawlessly until you accidentally tap a cop car mistakenly shoot an item critical to the mission, or misinterpret a fresh set of directives that demand timing during a mission's phase transition, and then it kicks you right back out to try again. It is completely up to you to decide how you see things. Some may take this as a part of the challenge, but it's a bit clear that it's been put there to frustrate the majority of the players, particularly your veterans. However, I never viewed this as an issue, and I doubt that many of you did either. For the first time in the series, an interactive cell phone is featured in the game. Nico uses it as a hub for a variety of activities. It is used throughout missions to check messages and communicate with the game's rich, well-developed NPC population, as well as a tool designed to allow players to experience Nico's life as if it were real. NPCs, for example, will call to talk for no other reasons than to extend your understanding of their character. 
You can go on dates, organize a game of darts or pool, and handle relationships just as you would outside of Rockstar's universe. Many of these diversions become monotonous after a while, but they are completely optional, so you can skip them if you want to. The biggest advantage it is the story. The intensity of the plot and people, together with the incredibly detailed world, will definitely leave a lasting effect on whoever enters this version of Liberty City. But we are all aware that GTA series has always been about the personal moments you have in the game. Remember when you went off to stunt jump and landed on a pedestrian after slamming through the light post? With a police helicopter plummeting to the ground in the background, causing a chain of explosions to rip through the halted traffic? This game is likewise full of these kinds of memories ready for you to create. Aside from that, there's plenty to discover in Liberty City, a remarkably realistic virtual replica of New York City, complete with all the dust, dirt and dents one would expect to see while walking down the real streets. There you can participate in missions, but you can also engage in many different of activities such as going to internet shops to click through the fictional junk mail or sitting back in the dimly lit apartment and absorbing TV shows and commercials that in typical Rockstar style always does it incredibly well in their culture style. Rockstar's depiction of New York features golden sunsets, countless landmarks and no wasted space. It is a compressed and beautiful embodiment of the real thing, an intentional departure from San Andreas' simpler styled mass. In just over three years, the developer transformed Los Santos' rudimentary character models and cardboard-like buildings into a rich HD version of GTA. In my opinion, the only similar leap in gaming history at the time was GTA 3's move from 2D to 3D. I'm sure you have all seen New York City in movies or even in person. If you are familiar with it, you will notice right away that Rockstar has nailed the mood, namely the late of the 2000s vibe. Algonquin, its version of a Manhattan, remains most spectacular individual region in the GTA's soaring skyscrapers and distant creative contrasts between districts. And the dizzying lights of Star Junction, its version of Times Square, all of these are simply fantastic and cozy, and to be honest, it has been brought to life, are simply fantastic and cozy. It has been brought to life so vividly that even a decade later, going on a walk in this place is invigorating and nostalgic in its own way. In addition, the world is populated with lifelike NPCs who truly bring the game to life. NPCs can be seen buying and eating food with, from street sellers, talking on their phones, scurrying for the cover when it rains, even covering themselves with newspapers and umbrellas. The autumn chill makes pedestrians' breath visible as they grasp their arms and quiver, demonstrating how cold it is in Liberty City. Traffic is another factor that has injected life into this bleak planet. Traffic builds up to simulate the true urbanity of the cities. Every time I enter this world, it feels like I'm visiting New York City in real life. The series' iconic radio is still very much present in GTA 4. When compared to the internet and cell phone, it appears to be more of a chronism. But it still provides the game's wonderful soundtrack as well as the slew of false discussion shows and sapphire of and hilarious advertising. This is also one of the primary reasons that GTA 4 is so addictive. The chat shows carried on your radio stations as well as the amusing advertising add a new layer of the authenticity and richness to the environment of the game. And the soundtrack was among the best at the time, and still is in my opinion. Everything from the startup music Soviet Connection by Michael Hunter to the majority of the tracks on the radio that are absolute bangers. However, many tracks from the soundtrack were eventually removed due to their licensing concerns, including a big section of the Vladivostok FM, a Russian pop station. Nonetheless, the game music remains one of the best in the gaming's world today. The quality and sound execution is not limited to the game's music. Stellar voice acting and the incredible amount of the meticulously crafted language combined to create highly fascinating and exciting story for the listeners to enjoy. As you go through the introductory sequences of the mission for the second time, you will frequently be treated to an altogether different cohesive dialogue thread amongst the vehicle's passengers. 
This will make you understand how far Rockstar has gone to populate this universe with variety and personality. But is also engraved into every area, from pedestrian samples of ambient horns, rail tracks, squeals, and general mechanical phones that permeate major cities. All of which Rockstar has captured so well in Liberty City, and it lends significantly to the game's authenticity. GTA 4 introduced Rockstar's proprietary game engine Rage to the GTA series for the first time. This new game engine enhanced the visual quality of the game's character animations and other physical simulations. Motion capture was used to create practically every animation in the game, ensuring that it looked the greatest in the game world at the time. However, Rockstar's preoccupation which, with getting every animation right led to the removal of several RPG features from the game. It was strange that hugely loaded aspects from GTA San Andreas such as shopping, working out at the gym, and eating food till you throw up were deleted from the game. But we now know that it was due to the part of the animation work necessary. Ragdoll physics was another feature in this area that defined the game and set the series future course. Running over pedestrians and shooting opponents became much more enjoyable and fascinating as a result. In addition, this engine had a certain vibe that was difficult to articulate. In GTA 4, everything seems to have certain weight that drags it down. Nico walks awkwardly, usually hampered by his lack of balance. Sometimes someone brushes past him or a car light taps him causing him to tumble awkwardly. You might smash your car and discover Nico flying into his death to his death through the windshield. When the cars collide, you may note that they dent inwards depending on the thing that they hit. Simple elements in physics like these are what helped Grand Theft Auto 4 become probably the most essential release in a series and defined Rockstar's future open environments. Let us take a closer look at the story's quality and how it was held up over the 16 years. GTA 4 follows Nico Bellic, a Serbian war veteran who moves to the city to start a new life. He does not make an effort to avoid problems, and he quickly finds himself popping heads for Russian thugs. While I remember Nico as a reluctant criminal forced back into the life he never wanted, a deeper look at most cutscenes reveals he enjoys it, or recognizes it what he is built for, which is probably the character's true strategy. It was a touch sincere in an attempt to inject more drama into the franchise, but Nico is still easier to appreciate than GTA V's three main protagonists. These honest attempts at character development were unquestionably worthwhile. While GTA IV's roster is still full of loudmouthed crooks, you get to see a lot more sides of Nico than you did with the previous GTA protagonists. These characteristics are highlighted by his close interactions with other characters. While Nico's narrative does not end happily, it is not only one told in GTA IV. The game's fantastic expansion pass, The Lost and the Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony, were far more valuable than anyone could have predicted. Each introduced a fresh protagonist, biker Johnny Klebitz and a jack-of-all-trades Luis Lopez, and their 8-hour storyline that are quite different from GTA 4's. Both characters had previously appeared briefly in Grand Theft Auto 4 cutscenes, where they encountered Nico Bellic, which makes a pleasant connection when you come upon it later while playing. Collectively, these stories provide a pretty detailed representation of Liberty City, bolstering its legitimacy as a town where everyone has a story, and it laid a groundwork for the three playable characters' concepts in Grand Theft Auto V. They each provide a unique perspective on the city, from the nightlife in Battle Gay Tony to the complex world of Alderney, bikers, conflicts in the Glossed and the Damned. Returning to the main campaign story is more lighthearted than serious at times, with a vivid cast of Nico's pals and a few well-developed adversaries. For the first time, Rockstar introduced narrative choices to the franchise, including a scenario in which you must select whether one of your pals will live or die. This was the first time Rockstar included something like this into the series, and it worked pretty well in my opinion. I remember thinking, these were gimmicky yet memorable when I first played Grand Theft Auto 4, but they're not done as frequently or successfully in other modern large games. Importantly, they allow you to choose Nico's morality depending on your ideas about who he is. 
and who he should become in his new life in Liberty City. I think it's easy to be critical of the story in the huge AAA games, comparing them unfavorably to movies or TV, but I simply enjoy writing and voice acting in Grand Theft Auto 4. It dares to take protagonists seriously, but not overly seriously, and encourages the players to do the same. Rockstar famously experimented with the friend system in GTA 4, where Nico's friends would call up to hang out. This has been widely derided because friends frequently ring up to ask whether they want to go bowling or a strip club. It is typically perceived as way too needy. But if you think about it, we should applaud Rockstar for offering that option, since when you do not want to go on a long adventure, these tiny tasks might come in handy and keep you engaged. For example, practically all of the mini-games were enjoyable to play, and I occasionally found myself devoting more time to them than to the core game and tasks. Most significantly, these small dates strengthened your friendship with your friends, while also revealing many more stories and traits about them. Some of them even provide a special service such as the free cab rides, fight backups, and more. You might find it bothersome at first, but I am confident you will get used to it as the game progresses. As I previously said, the game is all about the memories you make, and it will undoubtedly provide you with some enjoyable ones to reflect on in a few years. But it will not provide you with the same enjoyable memories as earlier titles, such as spawning Panzer in GTA Vice City or blowing up everything. Its realism has made the gameplay overly severe and less chaotic. Part of this seems from the fact that you no longer have access to the same tools as in the previous GTAs, such as the katana, flamethrower, jetpack, or military aircraft. Nico has a relatively standard arsenal of weapons, and a Molotov cocktail is only the one that does anything exciting. It appears that they want you to focus on Nico's tail and exploring the city rather than, or say, murdering people with a chainsaw for fun. But having both would have been ideal, however the DLC episode substantially enhances this. With a satchel of charges, automatic shotguns, a pipe bombs, adding much needed explosive capabilities, and the Belgae Tony including a rocket equipped helicopter that can be nicked at any time. The large scale silliness of GTA 5 as well as the thrilling missions of the Balgay Tony indicated that the Rockstar took that criticism into account. There were some writing faults in the game as well. Some of the portions were homophobic or misogynistic, well, felt immature rather than provocative. The game was released in 2008, when these issues were not as obnoxious or well known as they are today. However, if you try to play it in 2024, you may be upset, particularly if you take them seriously. However, by my standards, the game's aims and executions on those ambitions remain unparalleled. GTA 4 is epic in scope, dark, but humanistic and transcends these difficulties as a modern classic in ways that other GTAs unfortunately do not. GTA 4 was released in 2008, and the graphics speaks for themselves. Lighting is adequate, but not exceptional, since it can be uncomfortable after returning from more recent Rockstar titles such as obviously Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2. The color palette leaves something to be desired, particularly almost grayscale tone and night scenes. But this may be argued for as a choice made by the developers to pander to the game's somber plot, which makes sense in the context. The texture on the characters' models' faces and clothing can be unpleasant to today's eyes, especially during the close-cut shots, as they distract from the otherwise excellent realism. You may not be aware that it's established three global records when first released. Best grossing video game in 24 hours, greatest income earned by the entertainment product in 24 hours, and fastest selling video game in 24 hours. It sold nearly 3.6 million copies globally in its first 24 hours, produced over 310 million in sales. Within a week, overall sales reached 6 million copies. It did not stop there, the numbers increased to 8.5 million in a month, and it will have sold more than 22.5 million copies by 2020. I, need, I do not need to tell you how incredibly well that this game received. People had not seen the game like this before, and they all enjoyed it. 
He was also nominated for many prizes at the various events and won a total of 10 accolades in the year it was launched, including the Spike Video Game Prizes Game of the Year Award for 2008. You may be asking why I put this game on top of everything, even after 16 years. Yes, I admit that there are more spectacular games out there that provide even better gaming experience, such as the gigantic technical and artistic marvel Grand Theft Auto V. However, Grand Theft Auto IV was released at the period when game innovation were dying, and fans adored it for the change in freedom it provided, as well as its outstanding attention to detail. In any other game at the time, you could not approach a brick on the ground, pick it up, and throw it at someone. At the time, no other game had NPCs reacting as well as to their surroundings. The technological revolution that GTA 4 brought to Grand Theft Auto series and the gaming globe as a whole was rather amazing. Which is why Grand Theft Auto 4 became an all-time favorite for many, including myself. It also demonstrated that GTA's franchise was seeing a true generation shift. Similar to the early HD games Gears of War and Oblivion, GTA 4 effectively ended the age of clones that followed GTA 3, simply because no one else could create an open environment as good looking and sounding as Liberty City. It's amazing that the game was released 16 years ago, and yet I can still enjoy it as if it was just released yesterday. Now that I think about it, I spend ludicrous amount of time on Grand Theft Auto IV and still cannot get enough of it. Nico Bellic's phone has buttons, which serves as a stark reminder that GTA 4 is no longer a new game. The one feature combined with the fact that his phone cannot connect to the internet makes this game feel like it released hundreds of years ago. Personally, I would love to see a remaster of this game because I would like to play it again and over again. Putting it hundreds of hours and revisiting it with improved graphics, visuals, performance and more. Despite the fact that everything from its looks and its sound design and key game mechanics it's still relevant today. It outperforms many contemporary games of this age. If it were remastered or remade I would buy the collector's edition. Of course if there is one. If you have not yet explored Grand Theft Auto IV's gorgeous futuristic metropolis of Liberty City I strongly advise you to do so. The entire GTA formula has been modified and retooled in this version to make it more convenient, realistic, and ultimately mature. However, it lacks some of the interesting stuff from prior titles. When it comes to living virtual existence, managing a social network, nightlife, travel habits, an explosive foray of virtual dynamo, Nico Bellic is one to remember for years to come. So, is it worth returning to Grand Theft Auto 4 in 2024? Yes, yes, and yes. If you have not played this game yet, do so now. Nico's story is rarely matched, and it needs to be remembered regardless of how old the game is. GTA 4 is my favorite game, and I have completed it many times, to be exact, more than 15 at this point. And each time I have played the game, it felt like a new experience. The minor flaws in this 2008 masterwork are insignificant enough to keep you from fully appreciating everything that it has to offer. Whether you are playing for the first or the tenth time or a hundred, the intensity, passion, humor and other emotions that this game and its beautiful characters evoke are among the best gaming experience you will ever have. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, see you guys all and have a wonderful day.